so you thought yesterday's uh, yesterday's trip was a colossal cluster. Well, wait until you see today. Circus We City. haven't even left the dock yet, and Ernie's like, I forgot my sunglasses, man. Circus City. So we've got Dirty Ernie, Katie, the Queen, Nannerman, Brian, and Bucket Man Tony. Bucket Man! What's the rest of the song? I'll write some lyrics. So, if you haven't seen the video, Tony Slackline lost his. Lost his buddy. No, no, he lost his nickname yesterday. Um, we came up with a system to where we put small buckets on the side of the boat now with bait in them so not everybody's walking to the back of the boat. So all you offshore captains, if you're not doing that, I highly recommend doing it because it keeps everything from cluttering in the back. But anyway, Tony puts his bucket on the cleat. Cleat. What are you doing? I'm trying to film here. That ain't me. That's your partner. Jesus, crimity. <laughs> <clears throat> so the bucket goes overboard. He loses. <laughs> we can't do it. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> yes. We can do it for like 30 seconds at, at the most, I think. I just wanted the bucket yeah. man part. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, it, the bucket falls in the water and, and, and leaves the boat. So we go and find the bucket and Tony poses with the bucket. So instead of Rocket Man, he's Bucket Man now. No slack line? No slack line. He's lost, he's lost slack line. I mean, it was too classic. When you see the video, you'll understand. So anyway, we're heading out today. Fifth day for Chad and I. Just saying, if you're climbing down a mountain, don't let Tony tie the knot. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So we're gonna see what we can do. We've had some pretty good success. We had really good success on the gags yesterday. Had good success on the hogs the day before that and caught a bunch of fish this week. So we're going to see what happens. Hi, folks. We're just pulling up to the bridge and uh, I thought I would share something with you this morning. We got a pretty sun sunrise over there, but that wasn't what I was going to share with you. <laughs> so Tony's fished with us a few days this week, and he's actually caught a few fish. And uh, for Christmas, for Christmas, Tony got a present, and it's kind of a secret weapon. And I wanted to share it, share it with everybody in case you want to go get one. He's been wearing this every day this week. Mm. And it's a super rod Pokemon <laughs> card. Got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. So and uh, so run to, run to your it. nearest uh, hobby shop and pick you up one of these uh, trainer cards. It's the next next big thing. Oh come on, Chad! Shut the <laughs> mic. Twenty pound test. Oh, is that a gag? You think? Yeah. It was on a tin Oh, was it? I didn't know you were using tin. When the bike shut off, I'm like, somebody swam Yeah, in. that's why I went to the Frozen. That's one key thing to uh, kind of recognize when you're out here offshore like this, is if you're catching a bunch of like hogfish and grunts and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden the bite shuts off and the, and the bite was really, really good, that means that something bigger has moved into the area, like a big grouper, a big red grouper, a big gag grouper. And Chad put that pinfish down, and sure enough, wham, he got, got nailed. I put it down a frozen bait, seeing if I can get something on that. But if, th if that happens, then something big has moved in and kind of spooked those other fish. This guy's in fuego. Another one. Another hoagie. Yeah. Four days and a half. Oh, it's a good one. It's not. Yeah, it is. 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 Oh, come on. <laughs> Dirty Ernie! Coming through for Marion. 
Heads up, coming to the boat. It goes, yep, baby. It is. It is, baby. Another hoggy. Yeah. That one's bigger than yours. Yeah, yeah boy. Man, he's trying, man. <laughs> Listen, I can't do nothing, and he and he just has to stop. <laughs> yeah, I, stay on that side of the boat. <laughs> oh, yes. Good job, Tony. Thanks. You woke up Nanner Man, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice, Jay. Walking around the boat like he's running for election. <laughs> oh, Lord. Can you not wait till we get back to the office to take your picture? We have video video to prove it. <laughs> well, folks, what we had to do is we bounced around. We started off in 44 feet of water. We caught, caught some gags there, caught some keeper gags. Then we jumped out to 52, caught a keeper gag there. Some smaller ones but the bite was just kind of eh so I said you know what let's let's run out a little bit so we ran out to we're out at 78 feet and we found the hogfish we found some uh, more gags yeah we had a couple nice gags on until Tony broke it off our uh, bucket man Tony. Bucket man Tony. Live action right here. Oh Lord. The camera's not even since he just said that, there's no way we're gonna put the camera on him. Well I'm gonna have to because I gotta comment on something else. Nanderman! You're up! At least it's a hog. Oh hog. So anyway, we moved out to 78 feet, and that's where it seems to be the magic number today, at least. We have been catching all of our fish in 40 to 50 the last this last week, but it's changed it another hey. clone. Oh, he's small, but I'll take it. Way too many requests for a recipe or a cooking show. So Todd brought home some hogfish. So I thought I would do, it's like a really quick, easy uh, hogfish piccata is what we're gonna do. We're gonna serve it over some angel hair pasta. I have some asparagus roasting in the toaster oven that we're gonna have as a side. So I'm just gonna get going. This is gonna be a really quick video because it's a really quick, quick cook, okay? Gonna right. drop some pasta in. It's a little pot, so I'm, I'm just gonna do a southern thing and break it in half. Little angel hair, it won't take very long to cook. Try something new. Cook it inside the strainer so I can pull out the strainer to. I don't know. This is gonna work. We'll see. We'll all know together. So we're gonna add some olive oil to our pan. And let it get really hot for a minute. Put a little salt. Broke my pepper grinder today, so I'm using. This crazy one from the store. I will put the recipe below for you guys so you can see how I made all of this. Um, it, like I said, it should be really, like a really quick and easy thing. So that's boiling now. I did salt the water before you guys were on. I've set the timer for five minutes. Should be good. I can smell the oil, so I'm going to throw the fish in. We're really just gonna lightly cook it in here and then we're just gonna finish it in the oven because it's not gonna take very long. That way um, I can make the sauce in the pan while it's finishing off. Salt and pepper on the inside. See, I'm hoping I can just pull this strainer up and let it sit there for a minute because I'm gonna throw it in with the sauce. We'll see. I'm just going to flip this over. We're not trying to get it done all the way, so it's got to sit for a few minutes. So. Okay, I'm 
kind of take this fish out. It's only been in the pan for a couple minutes, but you know, it's, it's kind of small pieces of fish. I'm just going to throw them on the pan and um, throw them in the toaster oven for another minute when I get close to, when, I, when I'm almost done with the sauce. I'm going to do it yet because I don't want them to get overcooked. Right, took all my oil. Okay, add a little bit more olive oil to the pan. I'm going to throw in my garlic and shallots. And the thyme. Starts to get too brown too quick, go ahead and throw in the wine like I'm going to do. So we're going to throw in a couple tablespoons of butter because the wine has reduced. I use salted, but that just means I'm not going to add any additional salt because I didn't have any unsalted butter. I didn't want tongs, so I wanted this. A little bit of red pepper flake. Capers, that was capers. Just trying to get this into like a glossy, glossy sauce. I'm gonna throw this fish in this toaster oven with my bare hand. Don't look how dirty that is, I need a new one. Just for a minute or two. Now we're ready for the lemon juice. Cause we need that for piccata. I just have a couple lemon slices in here because there's just two of us, so I'm not cooking for a lot of people. Oh, Plenty of guys, this dish is super fast. I'm gonna do a little differently. Normally you would put the pasta in here, but because there's only two of us and I don't have a way to put the pasta on after, I think I want one more stick of butter. I love butter, sorry guys. Didn't look like a lot of pasta when I put it in here. A little more pasta than me. Turn this off. Stir this around. Got to put the fish on the pasta and then I'm going to stir the sauce over the top. It's breaking apart, but that's okay. We're going to eat it anyway. You guys have never cooked asparagus this way. Let me know. I'll tell you how to do it. It's just really simple. Oven method. There you go guys. You wanted a cookie segment. Sorry, it's short, sweet, and simple. You can't really cook fish for a length of time. But it's a hot fish piccata. Try it with any fish actually and see what you think about it. Thanks guys. Happy New Year.